Follow men every day. Follow men, follow men. You were looking so good to me the night we met. I could not see how deep you were. Follow men, follow men. Shout out to the room. Every day, every day, file them in, file them in, file them in. Every day, every day. Shout out to the room, shout out to the room, shout out to the room. Finally, a show with an array of topics. I mean, she talks about it all. The Natasha Simona sequence. Evening edition begins now. Shout out to the entire room. File them in here. Get them in. Tell them we're back. That's all. Tell them we're back. I see you all. Take your shoes off at the door. We definitely have a good day. Good evening. Let's get into it. Get comfy. Hello. Hello. Shout out to the room. Shout out to the entire room. Shout out to the room because I'm back. She's back. Hello. I feel good. I hope you feel good. And if you don't, I hope these next 90 minutes do something for you. But first, we got to adjust. Because you know what it is. You know, I need something for right here. I don't know what this company is, but I want something for like right here. Maybe like a photo of my kids or, you know, maybe TNSS, the Natasha Simona sequence. Do you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the room. Shout out to everybody walking in here as you file in here. Please take your shoes off at the door. Put your bags down. Hang your coat up. Shout out to my brother that's in here. My real life big brother. Uh Uh-huh. Shout out to Charles. I'll probably get in trouble for putting his real name out there. But shout out. That's my blood brother. He never gets a chance to watch me live, so I'm I'm happy to see him. I don't know how long I have him, but shout out to my brother. I would love to uh, actually interview him or, have, you know, we don't do interviews here. We have conversations. So I would love to have a conversation with him. Um, I don't know if I tell you his act. I don't know if that's going to embarrass him. You know, I don't know if what, what kind of page he's got going on over there. So just keep it a secret. But shout out to that's that's the love of my life. My brother. Hello. Aside from my children. Um, oh, my cousin is in the building. He's another one that I don't know if I can really shout his page out because his page is private, but he posts a lot of funny stuff. Um, we'll just say E. I'd be shouting out my family's government and they'd be like, yo, what are you doing? My family doesn't, you know, all of my family don't always get a chance to, uh, support me live. So when I see them live, I get excited. You all know my mother. She just walked in here. So everybody, shout out to the room. Shout out to the room. Shout out to all of the people in here. Shout out to my back. Uh Uh-oh, I'm tripping. What? Hold on. Got to always pull up communications with the back office. Good Lord. There we go. Um, Listen, everybody, we've got an amazing show lined up for you today. So I can't can't waste not one minute. Um, Just give me one second. Let me just... Oh, no, no, no. Hold on a minute. Let me just get myself right over here. I don't know what I was thinking. I always got to see when the back office sends me stuff. Shout out to the back office. They're they're literally part of the show at this point. (laughs) You all are used to the back office communicating with me for the morning show and the evening show. Shout out to everybody that showed up in the morning time. It was a time, right? 
This morning was like rare form. And you watched me spill hot tea all over myself. I was spilling the tea. I don't really spill tea. Entertainment news with a conscience is the motto over here. But I definitely got hot tea all over my lap. Um, I If your day, um, if your day, look at me, fumbling and jumbling. Hold on. I forgot to do one more thing. And hello, Natasha. Get it together. You got company today. Listen, everybody, if today's your birthday, your husband's birthday, your wife's birthday, the mailman's birthday, your side piece, your two piece, the whole piece, the kid's piece, your neighbor, shout out to them and happy birthday and shout out to you. Uh, If you're celebrating an anniversary, congratulations, happy anniversary. And if you're celebrating a divorce, well, may life give you everything in which you need for the rest of your life. Congratulations. Hello, shout out to the room. Listen, we're going to get through this quickly. The show, let me tell you something. I am beyond excited for the guest we have today. Before we get to the guest, you know how we do. We run through these national days, but not the way we do in the morning. So if you if you want to experience the morning show, you got to get up. Hello? There's a lot happening in the morning. There's a lot of bells. Good morning. <laughs> Good evening and good night. Good morning to everybody in Australia that tunes in. Or I don't know if our Melbourne, Australia people are in here yet, but um, they are truly living in the future as it's tomorrow morning. Good morning. Wake up. I'm very annoying in the morning time, but it is a vibe. Um, And I just want to say shout out to everybody that does watch the morning show. The author of the book that we've been reading from contacted me. Well, you know, I added her in in the post and she responded and she's down to come on the Natasha Simona sequence. So Courtney Ackerman will be joining us very soon. <laughs> Don't play with me over here. We're on our way to the networks. And until we get to the networks, this is our network. So um, it's really exciting because uh, <clears throat> if you're not able to join us in the mornings, because I do know it's really, really early. Um, the, the show airs. Is, we, we're live 4.30 a.m. Pacific, 7.30 Eastern. So it's really early in America. News all is getting ready for work and school and, you know, all that stuff. So um, honestly, I, 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 I'm I, just really grateful for who does show up. And we've got like a really cute crowd that comes over there. And it's fun and inspirational. And we do a lot of bells. Hello. Good morning. Um, we will not have uh, Courtney on in the morning time, but we will have her on for the evening edition. So I am so full. Like that really... Um, I, I I cannot wait to schedule her her on. And you know when you know when you don't know somebody, but you can read the words and be like, oh my god, she sound she even sounds excited to be here. I told her a lot of you were going out and getting her book and stuff, so I'm sure that made her day. Um. Anyway, enough about that. That's just you know taking care of some TNSS business, the Natasha Simona sequence business. Um. So today, after we get through our national days, we're gonna go through the headlines and our special guests. Oh, my God. His name is Van Brown. So excited to talk to him. He's got a book called Love Symptoms. What's happening here? Who set this up for me? Love Symptoms, Diagnosing and Curing the Common Illness. So y'all know... Y'all know I'm single. I'm ready to mingle. It's the whole cuffing season, so I don't want to get caught in this trap. And somebody dropped an interesting word in my inbox today, and I've got to ask him about it. Matter of fact, I got to write it down before I forget. Hold on a minute. Let me write this down. What is a... This person that dropped this word in my inbox, I was like, what the hell is that? Um, And after our guest does the guesting, we have a live unboxing. Hello? (laughs) Good evening, everybody. Let's jump right into one of the most important national days (laughs) that I'm going to talk about. It's not important, but today is National Gin and Tonic Day. So... As you all file in here, um, hi, just make sure everybody uh, has the drink menu for today. Please have non-alcoholic options. I've got a lot of people on here who don't drink. However, in the name of it being gin and tonic day, 
Uh huh. Yup, it's gin and tonic day. <laughs> you know, I wrote down all these fun facts about gin and tonic, thinking you you all would care. But guess what? I really don't think you care. Like, do you care that back in the 1700s they use? I don't even know how to say the word. Kunine, kunine, kinine, ku, it, you know, it's that weird thing that's in tonic. And it helped cure uh, malaria. Did you know that? Like, I wrote all this stuff down and I'm like, my people really don't care about that. They just want to know the liquor part. Like, where could we buy it? <laughs> and so people didn't like the flavor of it because it was like, you know, it has a very interesting, you know, tonic is like, but I love it. So what they started doing was putting water and sugar and, um, you know, all types of stuff in there to kind of like kill the flavor. And then they put gin in there, hence where gin and tonic came from. So right around the 1800s, gin and tonic became a thing because it's like, oh, we're curing malaria. Hello? Ouch. We're curing malaria, but we're also getting a little tipsy. <laughs> I don't think you guys care about that. So I don't have to go through all the fun facts of how gin and tonic came about, but... The day was formulated in 2011, so it's fairly new. But nonetheless, if you ever see me out, I really don't drink that much at all. And if you ever see me in public, it's okay. You do not have to buy me a drink. I will kindly refuse it. I kindly will refuse it because I'm not uh, a drinker like that anymore. But when I do drink, I enjoy a really, really good gin and tonic. Hello? Uh, it's also evaluate your life day. Those are the only two days I'm going to give you. There's a bunch of other ones, but we talk about that in the morning. So if you watch the morning show, I don't want to bore you right now. Um, evaluate your life day. And, and when I talked about that, it really, you know, if, if you, if before you go to bed, I really want you to, uh, get like an index card or something. I keep these index cards and paper and pens and highlighters all over my house. Cause I'm weird like that, but really just write down things within yourself that you're proud of. Straighten up, everybody. I'm being serious. I'm not joking. You, you need me to turn the music down? Okay, when I turn the music down, that signifies the importance of what I have to say. Sometimes we're living life waywardly. We're like this, flaring in the air. You, you all know I like to describe it like that. And sometimes we're not wholehearted. We're not wholeheartedly proud of who we are for whatever reason. I'm not judging, but I'm just saying. And so I've noticed in conversations that I sit in, a lot of people don't look at themselves in the mirror. This is not a conceited moment. Like, let me take a look at myself. No, no, no. Literally look at yourself in the mirror. Look at your body. Look into your eyes. Right? And literally ask yourself, am I proud of you? Whatever your name is, Natasha, Samantha, Cassandra, Charles, Alexia, Cass. Those are all my siblings, by the way. Matthew, Michael. Ask yourself, am I proud of you? Not of who I am. Literally look at yourself. Angela. I see these names coming in. Angela. I challenge you to ask yourself before you go to bed, look at yourself directly in the mirror, look into your own eyes and open your mouth and verbally ask yourself, Angela, am I proud of you? And if you are left stuck, if you feel your, your knees shaking, if you feel like that nervous feeling in your belly, if you start crying, you got to ask yourself why. And I want you to take a piece of paper, an index card, whatever you got. I want you to take an actual pen. Do you all still own these things? I don't want you to write it in your phone. I want you to take an actual pen and get an actual paper and write down the things within yourself that you are not proud of. And the things that you are proud of, because this is not a moment where you're just going to, you know, be disappointed in yourself wholeheartedly. You want, you know, write down the things that you're doing that do make you proud, but you want to write down the things that you would like to change. This is your moment of self-reflection. Today is Evaluate Your Life Day.
and I know this is the evening show here in America, you still have time to do this exercise. I, I only got you for another hour and 15 minutes, okay? So let's get into these headlines. We're going to shake up the room a little bit. That was a, li- that was a little too heavy. That was a little too heavy. Hello? Hello? <laughs> let's, let's shake it off. I was shaking a little too much. I got a little too much baggage to shake. Hello. Um, listen, let's get into these headlines. Can we get into these headlines? Shout out to the entire room. We got to move fast. Our guest is on the way. The guest is on the way. Hold on. every. Listen, that drink is special. That's for Van. Uh-huh. His wife might be coming. It's okay. And he's coming with his people. I don't know what he's drinking, but keep it, keep it clean. Hello? We serve drinks over here. Our guest is on the way. Let's get into these headlines. Are we ready for it? Here we go. All right. This guy I'm going to talk about right here. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Diddy, Love, Sean, Puffy. He's got every name taken. (laughs) Well, Diddy uh, popped up in New York yesterday. Um, did you all know that he has a school? <clears throat> Shout out to Auntie Melba Moore that just walked into the building. Excuse me, the legendary queen. Hello. Uh, she said I have invisible guests. Um, Auntie Melba, uh, excuse me. Melba Moore just walked into the building. She's got 10 people with her, a whole entourage. I need one person on her. Get her all the drinks she wants and sit her on the throne. Thank you. Uh <laughs> Diddy popped up in the Bronx yesterday for his school. He's got a school um, in the Bronx, Capital Preparatory Bronx Charter School. Um, <clears throat> so he said he was completely inspired. Um, remember, he ran that marathon, you know, however long ago, pledged about four million dollars to change or, you know, contribute to the school system in New York City. But afterwards, he said he really didn't feel full. He didn't feel like, you know, it was enough. So he's really passionate in making sure that he is a part of changing the trajectory of the underprivileged children of New York City. Um, I'm going to play a little bit uh, for you. And I want you to listen to this because one of the students there asked him a question. I think that... Um you know, there's always a lot of bureaucracy, but when it comes to the kids, the kids should come first. And instead of complaining about it, we wanted to do something about it. How did you develop your leadership skills? Okay. Um, I'm still developing my leadership skills. Don't you love that? So the pause was a little bit longer. I uh, shortened the pause. That was a young lady that asked him, how did you develop your leadership skills? And I love the fact that it, at his big age, with all of the, you know, ups and downs and ins and outs and, you know, quality mistakes that he has made within his life um, as this amazing entrepreneur, that he can look a student, one of his students, and admit that um, he's still learning. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, as his moment at the school continued, a reporter from Fox... Uh, asked him about this or here we go what's one takeaway you want them to always remember so they stay in school i think you know that in 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 this life that has to be a choice um i think the most important part for us was our kids that were coming out of our communities they weren't even ready to go to college they weren't even educated enough to go to college so we want them to be able to have that decision and we're proud that a hundred percent of our students um, go on to four-year college, get accepted to four-year colleges. That's amazing. Uh, New York City, one of, if actually is it New York City and LA uh, USD, the Los Angeles Unified School District, uh, both are the two largest school districts in the country, and they literally are underperformance in um, underprivileged neighborhoods more specifically the black and brown communities. I am a really big advocate um, on the education system. I enjoy charter schools. So him uh, doing what he's doing and pouring into the minds of these young stars. And when I say stars, I don't mean just an entertainment 
these children that you're looking at on the screen are our future. And if we don't take care of them from now, we're doomed. So um, I stand by this 100%. This is not about music. This is not about who he is or what he is or anything like that. This is about a man who knows I've got money and influence to pour into the communities that need it. Uh, my back office says he has three schools, right? So the thing is, is that uh, he partnered. Uh, you know what? I forgot to write the guy's name down. It's uh, his partner. So the first school is in Hartford, Connecticut, and uh, there's another school in the Bronx, and there's a, or is there two in Connecticut, and then the one that he opened up in the Bronx, or is there one in Harlem? Um, that part is a little bit blurry because I didn't plan on talking about that, but there is three capital preparatory Bronx charter schools. The one that he is over opened in fall 2020, or is it 26, or did the first one open in 2016? I'm a little mumbo jumbo right there, but shout out to Diddy. Um, doing amazing things for the children of our future. Uh, hello, one time for the one time. Hello, uh, look at me. <laughs> Speaking of the children of our future, look at his twin. You know, I always thought his son Christian looked like Kim. Uh, rest in peace to Kim Porter, his mother. He does have one in um, Harlem, right? Okay, so there's one in Harlem, one in the Bronx, and one in Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut. Thank you so much, Auntie Melba. I, I, I knew I was on, up to something. I, I had it right. Hello. <laughs> um, his son, Christian, if men could birth children, I would question who birthed this boy right here. This is his twin 1,000%. Um, in his interview, he said that him and his son are the first father-son duo to be the top of the charts. I don't know what charts because I was looking for the charts and my back office. We could not figure out which charts he was atop of. You know, he has his song with Bryson Tiller. Got to move on. And then uh, his son has Can't Stop, Won't Stop. It's number one somewhere. Both of their songs are number one somewhere together. But even though we can't find um, Steve, uh, even though we can't find where the... Um, what charts he's number one on? Shout out to my back office. My back office was like, fact check this. And I'm like, this is what the man said, and I'm not fact checking nothing. Um, I think it's just really beautiful to see father and son literally, um, you know, doing what they do and doing what they love together. Do you know what I'm saying? Steve Perry, thank you so much. Uh, I see everybody rolling in with the Steve Perry, but guess what? My back office said it first. <laughs> Let me chill before y'all try to gang up on my back office. Um, Yeah, Steve Perry is his partner. He has a new remix, Killing the Charts. He does, with Bryson Tiller. And actually, the both of them have their songs, Killing the Charts. We we just, you know, they, they didn't get their information back to me in time. We're just going to blame it on the back office. Uh-uh. My lady in the back office said the hip-hop and R&B charts. Hello? <laughs> Who run the world? Girls. Yes. Excuse me? We're gonna do the uh we're gonna do the unboxing at the end of the show. After my guest. I'm sorry. I gotta move quickly. My guest is my guest is on his way. We gotta get through this. Okay, everybody. Um let's uh get the next headlines up here. Look at this. A Missy Elliott Boulevard? Say it ain't so. <laughs> Missy Elliott just received her own street in her hometown of Portsmouth, Virginia. Monday, October 17th, like Monday the other day, uh, they had a whole ceremony for her um, at her, was it her old high school, I want to say? And um, there she is holding her own street sign. I wonder what that must feel like. Let me see. One day when I get my own street. What would it be named? You know what? The Natasha Simona Way. Natasha Simona Way. Missy Elliott Boulevard. Do you get to choose if you want boulevard or street or drive or lane or park? Who knows? Who knows how this works? Like, did she have a say in what she wants her street to be named? Like, what if she wanted like Miss Missy Misdemeanor Elliott? <laughs> People are saying it's long overdue, right? Somebody asked, did she get her PhD? Uh, I don't know. 
I didn't even know that she was like her honorary PhD or was she like actually like she couldn't have been in school. This lady is all over the place touring and, and writing music and singing and being yeah, yeah. <laughs> this live will not be saved because that was ridiculous. <laughs> but shout out to Missy. Um, she also was awarded the key to the city on the same day. Does the key, what does the key to the city do? Where does it open? Because let me tell you something. Although I'm from Brooklyn, I grew up in New Rochelle, New York. Dear New Rochelle, listen carefully. When you award me my street one day, I also, too, would like a key to the city. And I want a real key to the city. I don't just want one of these big old plastic keys and, you know what I'm saying, and it collects dust in the storage. I want a key to unlock all of the beauty supply stores. <laughs> And I'm going to open a Whole Foods in New Rochelle, okay? I will be in charge. I will make sure that I open a Whole Foods in New Rochelle. <laughs> this isn't about me. It's a Missy moment. So shout out to Missy. On top of receiving her street name, she also received the key to the city. But did you also know she, uh, she has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Did you know that? I didn't. <gasps> I don't have an asset for that. Dear back office, who makes my assets? Wow. The failure of a moment. Anyway, shout out to Missy. Um, okay, she did receive an honorary doctorate, doctorate from Berkeley College of Music, and she's the first female rapper. Oh, my back office is on fire. Thank you so much for that. Um... <laughs> LOL. I have a LOL moment. The key to the city opens all the city gates. Well, Missy is about to have a hee ha hee ha. Hope I'm invited. I would love to be the only correspondent there covering that. Um, shout out to Missy. Okay. Did you guys hear this? Do you do you all know who this is? This is Young Jock. A lot of you might have uh Seen him on the show Love and Hip Hop. You might have listened to his music. It's going down. Okay, I will never do that again. But nonetheless, uh, this is Young Jock. And today he had a big uh-oh moment. I don't know about you, but when I send money to people, I swear to God, the way I check, I, che I look like this. I check, put the phone down. I look again, quiet the room, blink, look again. When I tell you I am a freakazoid when I send money to people, I don't know how people, I don't care if I'm sending a dollar, a hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars, although I have never sent anybody a thousand dollars, but I have no problem receiving it. Hello, thank you so much. <laughs> but this guy right here sent somebody eighteen hundred dollars, so he was doing a Zell transaction, and he Zelled the wrong number. OK, Zell the wrong number and then message the number that he Zell once he realized, oh, snap, I sent the wrong number and asked the person, you know, can you please send it back to me? Um, I thought I could. Uh, I thought I, I thought I could read you the text. Um. I thought I was going to be able to read you the text verbatim, but nonetheless, the crux of it, it basically says, you know, if you understand how blessings work, you would send it back to me and God will bless you, you know, more than the <laughs> like, look at Jock trying to be religiously political. Boy, that money is gone, spent and accounted for. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, everybody thinks like all these celebrities that you see on TV and stuff like that have a lot of money. But the truth is, is that behind the scenes, you just really know how people's lives are. And what's going on. So I do feel a little bit bad for him. Because for him to be begging for that money. Probably means. He kind of sort of needs it. Not to be in his pockets or anything like that. But $1,800. I don't care which way you flip it. Spin it and reverse it. That might be chump change to some. But I know if I lost $1,800. Y'all will see me on the 101 highway right now. With a cup. Will work. <laughs> I need 1,800 cards to drop a dollar in my cup. <laughs> um, 
So the person ended up blocking him. <laughs> and I'm so mad at this photo we chose to use for this segment. My back office is a trip. Y'all are so messed up for this one. Doesn't he look like he's... <laughs> Doesn't he look like he's looking at the person that has the money? Like, if you don't give me my goddamn money right now, I'm going to slap the teeth out of your mouth. <laughs> um, I don't know how Zelle works. I just know that when I've sent money with Zelle, it asks you like three different times. Are you sure that you're sending it to the right recipient? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Listen, when you're sending money to people electronically, not only do I need the money that you're sending to me to come to me. But I promise you, whomever I'm sending the money to, I'm going to make sure you get that joint, not somebody else. Good day and good night. Shout out to Young Jock for losing $1,800. But let's spin this. Let's spin this. I hope that the person who accidentally received this money was in dire, desperate need for the $1,800. And I hope that when the notification popped up on their phone, they cried and they did something extremely responsible and deserving with that money. I ho- I really hope that in a, in a twisted fate of this story, that the person received it was in such dire straits that it was like the biggest blessing. I hope that that's the flip on this. Anyway. We're going to move on because guess what? My guest is coming in the door. He's taking off his shoes right now. He's hanging up his coat. His lovely wife is walking in right behind him. That's all I've got for the headline news, everybody. Um, The guest is coming in. He's an author. He's a father. He's a husband. He's got this amazing book. Love Symptoms, Diagnosing and Curing the Common Illness. So right after this reset, we're going to bring up our guest. Shout out to the entire room. Shout out to the entire room for being here. Let's just reset the room. Let's stress, stretch. Let me just make sure that. Uh, let me make sure you all got your drinks and everybody's comfortable as my people pass around the drinks and the hors d'oeuvres. Hello? Finally, a show with an array of topics. I mean, she talks about it all. The Natasha Simona Sequence, Evening Edition. Parliament, everybody. Let's get comfortable. Sit upright. And there he goes. Shout out to our amazing guest. Welcome to the Natasha Simona sequence. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? Oh, my goodness. I am like, I was amazing before, but now let's find an adjective to top amazing. I'm <laughs> I'm honored to meet you, speak to you. I'm excited. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous, but it's not about me. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm excited to, to have this conversation with you and see what happens. So I'm looking forward to it. Not and see what happens. Like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> like we're testing her out. Let's see, let's see where the chips fall here. <laughs> With every conversation, something divine always happens. And so I, I'm always excited for the, the new. I have no expectations. I'm just looking forward to what is going to be expressed through both of us. That's what I meant. <laughs> okay. So let me. Uh, okay, everybody, we have company right now. So I need everybody to straighten up. I need you to sit up um, and stop drinking right now in front of our guest. Everybody, this is Van Jones, author of Love Symptoms. Diagnosing and curing the common illness. Um, so when I read that, I said, Well, is he a doctor? Is he the like, are you the love doctor? Yes, uh, some have uh, proclaimed me that. 
Um, and I'm not shy. I won't shy away from it. Yes, there's a lot of things that I have learned, experienced, and therefore I've researched this topic for over 20 years. So, yes, I can successfully say, yes, I am the love doctor. So for you to have done 20 years of research to then put together the book to then teach women like myself about love and the symptoms and now curing a diagnosis, what did you experience in the 20 years of research that you did? <laughs> well, from experience and also research, I learned that sometimes our perspective becomes our reality and sometimes our experiences are not truthful even though they are our experiences let's say for example i've counseled a lot of women where their experience of love is devastating even though the definition of love is supposed to be something of comfort of joy of of, of a welcomingness but because of their experience from the partners they've had, love resembles something very dangerous to them. So when someone is saying love, they're not receiving it in the way that it's supposed to be received simply because of their experience. What I've learned in my research, in order so for someone to love successfully, they have to kill the dead history from family members, from past lovers, and successful. Okay. So now, with that breakdown, do you think love is a feeling? What is love a feeling, or is it a decision? Sorry, say that one more time. So just with your explanation and breakdown, is love a feeling or is it a decision? And based on just within your research and feedback, the decision sometimes and, the, and even if I would even say the feeling. So, yeah, like now I'm so the decision. Yeah. What is it? Now, see, I'm all confused now. <laughs> no, no, we'll, we'll make it clear. Love is a decision first. It has to be a decision first because, but what we have done, we've made it a feeling when it's supposed to be a decision first. Keep in mind, let's say if you're going into a business and this business has high risk, you're making and you're, a, you're about to invest $100,000. So you're making a decision that this is what I am willing to lose in order to gain this much. So love first has to be a decision. I have to be willing to lose. There has to be a pain that I am willing to endure in order to be successful. So when you say you love someone, love says you cannot love someone without giving. Meaning the only reason why I enter into a relationship is to give. But the reason why we enter into a relationship because we want to receive so therefore, we're entering into it from a deficit. Okay. Now, because of that deficit, the person, has the, the person has the thought or the feeling where they can exploit all of the emotions we have because we're entering into it needing something rather than giving something. So love has to be a decision. That's the reason why I say the success of your alone time will determine the success in your relationship. How much do you love your alone time? How much do you get to know you in your alone time? How much do you get to know about self and purpose? And mm -hmm. in the fullness of yourself, then you could fully give yourself to someone else, understanding that I don't need you, but I want your company. There's a difference. So it has to be a decision first, then healthy feelings can come out of it. So I have a question now. Do you think that the amount of time that someone is in a relationship and the relationship could be a marriage or, you know, just a, you know, re regular boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that the term in which they've been together should, de should determine how long they should wait before they find new love should they split up? So if somebody's together for five years, they should right. wait. You know what I mean? Like, do, is there a number to no, great, the... Mm -hmm. great 
question. Great, great question. Because a lot of times I find, especially in people that have counseled, they came fresh out of a relationship of five years. And then the very next relationship, within four months, they're married. And what they fail to realize is this is what they did. See, love doesn't disappear. It simply is reciprocated to the next person. So because you've opened up that vessel and you're willing to love and you spend five years with that person and now you've just, this thing just automatically ended and now your heart is trying to find a new vessel to feel that comfort and that familiarity. And what you've done is you've given that love and everything, that euphoria and everything that you've conjured up and you've given it to someone else when they didn't even deserve it. Simply because... Mm go anywhere is simply transferred so when someone gets out of a relationship the first thing they're supposed to do is spend time with themselves recoiling because it's almost like it's an addiction oh i'm so used to calling you on saturday nights i'm so used to spending all of my time with you now that i don't have that we make unwise decisions because we want that closeness and that physical touch again so we're willing to give it to anyone just not to feel alone and it's very pivotal that you spend at least six months where you just get to know you. What did I learn? What are mistakes? What could I have done better in this relationship? Did I give myself to the point where I didn't know who I was? Did I have a good sense of self? Am I, did I hold unforgiveness? Am I forgiving? All of this is a great time to do self-inventory on who you are individually. Nothing to do with anybody else just everything. How can I be better as a person? So when you enter into the next relationship, you're not coming into it with these triggers and these emotions, just wanting to be close to someone. You've successfully loved your alone time. Now you enter back into the dating space where you could fully, fully be in control of your, your, your mind, your will, and your emotions. I'm not going to lie. I feel like you know me because <laughs> no, I, I feel that way because the things in what you just said, I did. And I'm like, who told him about my life? <laughs> no, I, 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 I like that right there. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. And I feel like um, you have validated the things in which I did. So, okay, okay, I'm halfway there. I'm halfway to meeting my husband. Okay, okay, okay. The doctor, the love doctor is affirming these things. So you spent 20 years on this research. Mm -hmm. I'm, I want to go, so you spent 20 years on this research. I want to go to 21 years. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to write this book? Well, I... Thank you so much. I mean, you're, you're asking some great questions. And uh, I just Thank you. so excited simply because um, this conversation is so needed. And uh, I just thank you. I can't thank you enough for everything that you do and the way you represent yourself. So let's just go there first. <laughs> um, thank you. The reason why I wrote this book is because early on in uh, my relationships, I suffered tremendously simply because I didn't have the wisdom. I had a limited understanding of what love was and how it's supposed to be given. When you don't know the truth about something, automatically experimentation, therefore failure will be the result. See, we've made the mistake just because we're adults capable of buying adult beverages and driving a car, we think that we're ready for love. But love is a mature vehicle. And if I don't know what love is and I just go into it simply because I like this person or love this person, the thing that you love, you could actually destroy because you have never investigated what love is. And so after a series of four or five relationships would ended in breakup and cheating and scandals, and I said, instead of going again, let me sit down and get wisdom. And so for the next five years, I just sat and I got wisdom. I went into the library and I read every single book I could find on love and relationships because I wanted to understand what I kept doing wrong. See, the first thing we have to do is have to put accountability on ourselves. Here's the fifth relationship that ended in a bad way. 
I could have easily said, oh, they're just ignorant. They don't understand what they have. But I took personal response. I said, no, two people were in this relationship, so I must be complicit in this. So I read every single book I could find on a relationship, and, and I just started to dive deeper in the spiritual truth. Where did love come from? What is the meaning of it? And therefore, compile this beautiful poetry that I call Love Symptoms. And it's my journey, everything I learned, everything I had to, to kill along the way, my history, family history things that were not positive or, or full with wisdom, and then getting wisdom and then now letting that wisdom become a part of you. So I put it all in a pile. So it's, it's, it's literally 48 years of my brain on my thoughts on, on relationship. <laughs> so now I have a really important question for you. Please. Let's loosen our shoulders a little bit. Cause, cause I, I, I really want to know mm -hmm. you said after stopping yourself and, and realizing, wait a minute. So you went through a self evaluating moment. Yes. Then you did all this research. You spent five years, you know, doing this research and really come, Getting, getting your, essentially, what we have now as love symptoms together. Yeah, started back dating, yes. Did you find your own love in this process? Oh, I, yes, I certainly did. Uh, my wife of uh, almost four years, and we have a son together. His name is Ezekiel. Uh, but it was so funny. In the midst of dating her, we dated for five years. And in the midst of dating her, this is when I knew this knowledge. But see, there's a difference between a knowledge that you know and a knowledge that is in you. I knew this knowledge. And as I'm learning this knowledge, I was inconsistent in actually expressing it. Hello? See, it, has <laughs> seep, it has to seep into you. But okay. here's the beauty of it. Every time you meet knowledge, then here comes the opportunity in order for you to express the truth of it. And because I found ourselves, see, what I realized in this, just because two great people come together doesn't mean that a successful relationship is the result. I had to learn that I was not merging lives with her. I was merging life with her history. Mm. See, the that her mom raised her. Her father died when she was six months. And so oh, wow. raised her a specific way. There was this hippie type of love with no correction. But here I am. My parents raised me with nothing but structure. And so now I come into her life and I'm saying, fix this, fix that, fix that. So it didn't feel like love to her. And then she's giving me this hippie love and I can't respond to it. So I had to learn that, no, I have to love her on her terms. I can bring my structure and not give her what she is so accustomed to giving. Now, as I gave her more of what she was accustomed to, then I could sprinkle the structure because each relationship is a mirror. She's supposed to be better for knowing me. I'm supposed to be better for knowing her. So what I brought to her life was more structure. What she brought to my life was more freedom to love. And now there's <laughs> beautiful relationship happening. And I thank God that I was willing to endure the, the, the pain of getting to know each other. See, we think, because the world is like a microwave society, we think the minute there's a sign of irritation, it means that this can't be for me. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if you just get wisdom and you said, okay, let me study not her, study her history or study his history or study the top five traumas in his or her life. And how did you get over it? How did you problem solve it? Or are you still going through it? Because here's what we do, Natasha. We actually communicate from our top five traumas, either how we're still getting through it or how we got through it. Yeah. And we're on the other side of it. All of this is a great insight into the human being. But what we do, we ask, we ask fluffy questions that has nothing to do with nothing. Oh, right. where, oh, where's the last place you went on vacation? Okay, what is about this? When's your birthday? All of those things are great. But if I don't know the depths of your soul and, and the, 
the most painful moments that you cried, that's the insight that I need to know in order to get to your heart. I, I just want to like keep you, I want you like every day. I need you, not, not maybe not every day, like once a week, I just need you to kind of like stop in. Because let me tell you something, not only myself, but a lot of people in the room right now, we need you. We need this kind of guidance. It's sound, it's pure, and it, you're literally speaking from your experience and, and your knowledge of what you've acquired in the 20 years that you spent really pouring into this labor of love. Um, before I let you go, because I, I hear your amazing family in the back, and I, as much as I want to keep you here, unfortunately, I have to release you back into your world. Um, we, we, we could go as long as you want. Take your time. Is hello? That- Listen, I'm, I'm preparing for a husband. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> Not too much on me. <laughs> I do. Who is your target audience? Um, great question. Um, I would say when we, when I'm asked that question, I, I will, I'm tend to be drawn to say, throw numbers out, but the best way to answer it, anyone who wants to be a great representative of love. See, and what we've done, we've reduced love to simply romanticism, boy, girlfriend, husband, wife, but Love is a universal tool. The way I love my father, my mother, the way I love my friends, the way I love God, the way I love self. See, the greatest opportunity for you to be successful in love is if as, you're, as this husband is coming, what I want to give to you and those who are looking for a great man or a great woman, don't be so concerned if they love you. Look for evidence of them loving themselves. See, if they love themselves, then it's going to be so easy to love you. See, because if I don't love me and I'm giving myself to you, then I'm giving you something that I don't want. <laughs> would you, that I, would, I typically would call that pouring from an empty cup. Right, yes. Yeah. Um, I love when my audience, uh, here we, we're, very, we're a very interactive group. Um, do you mind if I read some questions off? I, I've got a couple of questions. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to start with uh, the first question. <clears throat> D. Tuggle, his name is also Derek. Uh, he says, how are we as men to deal and respond to women who have been in relationships with one who's been in a bad relationship and break up? Um, hold on a second uh, here, Van. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the question right. so that you two can see it because I could have read it wrong. So it's right there if um, you can see that. All right, let me see. Um... If you, can't, if you can't see it, I'll read it again. Yeah, I can't see it. Can you rephrase it? For Absolutely. Me? How are we as men sure. to deal and respond to women who have been in relationships with one who's... Okay. So basically he's saying, as a man, this is a man asking the question, how right. do men uh, respond and deal with women who have been in bad relationships? Great, great, great question. Because... The key is there is no such thing as a finished man or a finished woman. Each person you meet is going to have some degree of irritation or what we tend to call baggage. See, only the consistency of love will drive out fear and ignorance. But what we've been taught, we've been taught, you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. You give me flowers, I give you a gift. You take care of me, you pay for the next meal, I pay for the other one. But we've never been taught to, are you willing to remain you even when the person is not expressing their best self? See, what, see what happens a lot, women and men, all their lives from parents, brothers and sisters, past lovers, all their lives they have seen inconsistencies in their life. And so, therefore, it gives them permission to be inconsistent in themselves. So imagine if you show up, and even through the failures of them, you still remain consistent, and you still give your love. You still show up on time. Even if she snaps off at you, you still stay calm, and you still give love and consideration. See, the goal is to remain me. And the more I remain me, the more I pull her out of herself. Wow. 
That's the best thing you can ever do. Especially the only thing you want to ask yourself, my brother, is she worth building a house upon? That's the only question you want to want. Are you willing to endure this temporary irritation in order for two people to produce the best out of themselves? See, we have to be willing to be a representative of love. If I don't sacrifice, then how can I want great things out of my life if I'm not willing to be consistent even though the person has moments of temporary failure? We have to see beyond the failure and love the person still. You are the official love doctor uh, for the Natasha Simona sequence. I'm just letting you know that. I received. I hope- Thank you so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> Van Brown, Mr. Van Brown, I am so grateful that you have shared this gift of love knowledge to all of us. Please let us know where we can buy this book immediately. Thank you so much. It's right now it's on Amazon.com. Just type in Love Symptoms Van Brown. And then also you can go to my website, vanbrown.com. It's where I do counseling for individual married couples, couples uh, wanting to, who are engaged or seeking to get engaged, or even corporations itself. So it's a little bit of everything. So you go to the website, you can either get it from Amazon.com or go to my website, VanBrown.com. Everybody, right now, please let me see some hearts, whatever color you choose. I just want to fill up this entire screen with hearts. Mr. Author family man, husband, and new friend to the show. Because, listen, please feel free to come here and and let us know all of the amazing things that you are pushing out from your brain to the paper, to the press. Thank you. It, it was it was a complete honor to um have you here. You You spoke to a room full of wonderful people who need this information but you really spoke to me because maybe i'm ready i'm on my way (laughs) thank you so much for having me and um just know that i'm available uh, anytime i love when i could tell that you're such a genuine soul and i i thank god for you because we need more people who are willing to get to the truth in order for all of us to have the opportunity to be free so i'm really excited thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I release you back to your amazing family. Please, please send my love to your family. And uh, they're also welcome here as well. Thank you so much. All okay, right. don't, don't, don't forget to put your shoes on as you leave. I've got too many leftover shoes here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Everybody, that was Van Brown. Oh, no, we got to get louder air horns. I, uh, I didn't want to scare him with my sound effects over here. He probably would have been like, this girl has got way too much going on. How exciting was that conversation? Let's just let it breathe. Let's let that breathe. Did you learn a lot? I did. I learned, I'm, I feel, I feel so full. I feel like for everybody in here that felt like he spoke directly to you, I feel like we're going to be okay. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like we're 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 in good company. We're receiving trustworthy information. And um a lot of times with these uh guided self-help books um sometimes you the mark is missed if you know what I'm saying. And you can just you can look at you can look at him and how passionately he was speaking about just the information that he wrote, how he went about his own self-discovery. And I talked to you all earlier. Today is self-life, uh, evaluate your life day. 
so it was really refreshing to hear him talk about the moments in which in which um he evaluated his life and really changed his life and and met his wife and in the midst of him doing the work within himself that's when he met his wife so the key takeaway everybody do your own internal work do the work for all of you that missed it the book is called love symptoms diagnosing and curing the common illness i will definitely have that all wrapped up together for you um we will be reading from that book very soon together man that was really good all right everybody let's shake our shoulders out we've got a live unboxing in the meantime let's uh just going to do a quick reset and I'm going to get this box and we're going to do a live unboxing. Here we go. Uh Oh, that's not, that wasn't it. Things happen. It's a live show. We're going to do a live unboxing right now. Come on. I'm just going to reset the room one time. Finally, a show with an array of topics. I mean, she talks about it all. The Natasha Simona sequence evening of this Shout out to the room. Shout out to the room. Shout out to the entire room. Uh, normally, um, she doesn't. Okay. Normally, when I do these unboxings, uh, my kids. Uh, shout out to the room. Shout out to the entire room. Thank you to our official uh, show announcer, Mr. Rick Party. Hello. Um. <clears throat> excuse me. Normally when I do these unboxings, uh, 10 and 13, my two children, if you're new to uh, the Natasha Simona sequence, they, they like to uh, be in here with me. Um, so here we go. Um, listen, I just want to say thank you uh, to everyone that's been contributing and pouring into this show. Whether you have, you know, hit the link and, and done your thing, you watch the show, you talk in the comments, like every single thing that you do to support me. Support isn't one dimensional. Do we understand that? Support is not one dimensional. I, just because you didn't contribute to the Cash App or the Venmo or the Zelle, just because you didn't do anything on the wish list does not mean that that's your only way of supporting. The fact that you all show up and you sit and watch me, my silent viewers, shout out to the silent viewers. I'm talking to you. I'm looking right at you. The person sitting there not talking in the chat, I appreciate you. I appreciate the people who hang out in the chat and you guys are, are communicating to me, talking to me. That is support. So over here at the Natasha Simona Sequence, I am in deep gratitude to every way in which you have supported me. Um, we're on our way to the networks together. Do you understand me? Hello? So let's get to it. All right. This came in today. This came in today. I picked it up right before I got here. Oh my God. It's for 10 and 13. Wow. Okay. So the 10 year old, <laughs> um, excuse me. Who put this on the list? Oh, the 13-year-old. So the 13-year-old has been really big in um, working out. They teach them about health and their body and everything like that. And um, so he's been just, just health and body conscious. So he put these workout bands um, on his list. So that came in. Okay, this is with that too. Oh my gosh. And then he also put, what is this? Oh, he put books. My 13 year old is a super big uh, reader. He loves to read books, loves history books. What is this one? Uh, I don't even know what this is, but this was on, on the kids wish list. So this is for, is there anything else in there, Ted? Okay. Can you, do you want to say thank you on behalf of your brother since he's unavailable? 
let's put this down. My 10 year old is going to receive this on the 13 year old's behalf. Should I put his business out there? He's using the restroom. <laughs> is that where he is or is he doing his homework? He's in the bathroom. Okay, so on behalf of the 13 year old, my 10 year old is going to uh, accept on his behalf. Are you feeling a little sad right now? Okay, you look, why is your eyes glossy? Hey, where does your eyes are go? You know these kids. Okay, please accept the gifts on your brother's behalf. Thank you so much for the gifts. I really appreciate it. Amir, really appreciate it too. Thank you so much. <laughs> Come here. Are, are there notes in there? Let me see something. Okay, let's see all of what is happening here. There's a lot of paperwork in there. Oh, this is so, oh my God. Uh-oh. Oh my God. The person who sent the gifts is in the room. And I don't know if I'm allowed to, because I didn't clear it uh, with the person. Um, so knowing that the person is in the room, Send me a thumbs up if I'm allowed to say. If I don't see a thumbs up from you, I will not say who it's from, but I will read. It says, enjoy your gift. And that's on both of the notes. Um, I do not, I will not ever say your name unless I get proper clearance from you because some people just like to remain quiet and silent. Um, okay, it's fine. Shout out to Bestie. Shout out to Bestie. Thank you so much, Bestie. Um, <sighs> wow. Take that to your brother. You gonna take it to him? Okay. Uh, that band too. There was a band. That black band? Okay. Thank you. Huh? I want you to come back and give me kisses. Okay. Oh, my God. Bestie, he's going to be so happy. So, all right, now that the 10-year-old is gone, one of the things that I was really concerned about, so these the 10-year-old, he, he gets like weak. He gets a little weird, you know, like if I love up on the 13 year old too much, he'll be like, oh, I guess you only have one son. And I'm like, I never expected for the little one to be jealous. You know what I'm saying? Because he naturally gets like all gets the attention from his brother. You know what I mean? Like the little ones always get like the extra love. But I always notice like when it's too, too much on the older one. So his eyes got a little glossy. But one of the things that I taught him. I said to him, I said, now, listen, I wasn't going to do, I don't know how to do these. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to do this. So we all just get really happy for each other. And so, no, 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 don't, don't even roll in here with the do separate list. We're not doing that. And here's the reason why we're not doing that. Because the way I teach my children is you should always be happy for your neighbor, period. Always be happy for your neighbor. You never look at your neighbor and envy what they have or wish you had what they have. You understand? That's how I teach my children. So I always, I always tell him, if you see me loving on your brother, just know that he needs that. So you come in and give him extra love. If you see your brother getting some things, it doesn't mean that, oh, he got something. You got to get something at the same time. If you see me getting something, that doesn't mean you got to get something too. We all get everything that we need and want in the time in which we get them. And that's it. And you be grateful for the things that you have. You work hard for the things that you want and everything that's given to you outside of you getting it yourself, you be grateful for and you cheer and clap for all, everybody around you, for your friends, for your siblings, for your cousins, you clap for everybody and you have to do it from a genuine space. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
So no, we're not going to do separate lists for the boys. No, if you all, you know, are contributing to the wish list, not only like, is that like crazy in the most amazing heartfelt way, but do not, and I repeat, do not feel obligated to buy one for 10 and one for 13. Oh, I got to do this. And I, because if you do that and I see a pattern in doing that, I promise you I'll take off the wish list <laughs> and look at you all like, how are you threatening us that you're going to take off your kids? With? <laughs> I will. Cause that's not how I raise my children at all. And I told them, I said, this is all new here. I don't know how this works, but it's fun and we're grateful and we're going to clap and cheer for everybody. And that's it. Let's get back to normal. Let's raise our levels because that moment is over. Bestie, I just want to say thank you. I want to say that was a very, very, very big surprise. And as you all know, on another note, my 13 year old has been having a hard time just being 13 and all types of stuff. And you, you know, you we're, we're small and we're intimate here. So you all know um, that the, that the 13 year old has been like in this interesting mood. So that definitely will elevate his spirits big time. So I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to everybody in here. Like I said, there's this, this, uh, this show is not one dimensional. Your support is not one dimensional. Okay. Thank you for everything. Everybody. Y'all not about to get me choked up. We had a great show today. Um, listen, we don't need to drag. Start putting your shoes on everybody. Don't break any of my glasses. Okay. Uh, let me send my people around to collect your glasses. Everybody collect the glasses. They don't got to go home, but they got to get the hell up on out of here. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want to say a special shout out to the queen herself, Auntie Melba Moore. If you are familiar and in these streets, Melba Moore, she does her thing. She's very supportive. She shows up, especially to Club Quarantine. She'd be dancing and stretching and doing her thing. And um, I'm just grateful that uh, she does support me. And, and she's like, you know, she has fun in the chat. And uh, I just want you all to make sure if you are in the D.C. area, Melba Moore is currently in a play called Roll On, as in Roll On. I was about to sing, but y'all don't appreciate my singing. <laughs> Um, right now, uh, Melbourne Moore is in a play called Roll On. It's a gospel musical, and it's at the Arc Theater in Washington, D.C., okay? You don't have much time left. That play started October 9th, and you've got until the 30th. The last day is the 30th. So if you live in the D.C., Washington, D.C. area, you're going to be traveling to that area, you need something to do, you want to get away for a weekend or whatever have you, please uh, check out the Arc Theater, and go and see Melba Moore. Respectfully, we call her Auntie Melba Moore, the queen. Um, I do have other um, projects that she's working on, and, and I'll, I will be rolling that out. But right now, go see her at the Arc Theater in Washington, D.C. Um, tomorrow's show, tomorrow's uh, evening show, the Natasha Simona Sequence Evening Edition, it's, I've got a good one for you. Um, I've got a chef. Oh, my mouth, my mouth started watering. I almost spit all over my microphone. <laughs> um, excuse me. Auntie Melba said some of the youngins might have to Google me. Google her. Hello? Google her. Know your history. Because the history, she's a living legend. One time for the 10 time. She is a living legend. Tony Award winning, Grammy nominated legend. Yeah. So when you're all sitting on the toilet tonight and you scrolling on the internet, Google Melba Moore. But I will say respectfully, we've got a mature crowd in here. Not much youngins in here. But if you're watching me on the replay, do your due diligence and Google Melba Moore. She shows up for the Tosh. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow's show, I have a chef. Um, it's going to be a treat. Tomorrow is National Chef Day. So 
it is only appropriate that I have a chef on the show tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow evening show. Uh, for those of you that are new to me, um, I just want to say thank you. Um, I do two shows a day here. I do two talk shows on Instagram. I do one in the morning, the Natasha Simona Sequence AM, and that show starts at 4.30 a.m. Pacific, 7.30 a.m. Eastern. Uh-huh. Wake up with me. Wake up with me and then go to bed with me. Hello? Easy. I am single, though. <laughs> um, I do two shows a day here. So morning time, you get up. Uh, the morning show definitely has a great vibe. Great feel, if I can say so myself. I know when I'm finished with you all in the morning, I feel good and ready to start my day. And I honestly, um, I need a windscreen for girth. I have one, a, a, an expensive one, one that I have to screw on. Is this better? Y'all like y'all think I need to be talking with the windscreen? I like to get a little. I like to get close. I don't like a. I feel like the windscreen just prevents me from. I use a windscreen when I'm working. Um, for those of you that didn't know, I'm a voiceover artist. So I use the windscreen when I'm working. But when I'm talking to you, sometimes I want to get a little bit close and I just kind of want to do a little bit of this and get a little close to you. Is that okay with you? Detuggle? Uh, so anyway, back to what I was saying. My morning show. I'll be back on tomorrow morning and then I'll be back on in the evening. Instagram talk show. Let's get that in rotation. The Natasha Simona sequence. And I'm your host, Natasha Simona. Join me tomorrow night. Join me tomorrow morning. Watch me on the replays. Share me. Um, for everybody that supports the show in any which way that you have already, I, I've been thanking you throughout the whole show. You're going to get tired of me thanking you. I'm not sorry. I will be thanking you all, all the way to the networks. We're taking this to the network. Together, you all are going to be part of my live studio audience. So we're going to go from the phones to a live stage. Hello? We manifest things over here. As you all are putting on your shoes, please don't forget your bags, your purses, your briefcases, your book bags and all that stuff. Get all that crap out of my house. <laughs> get all your stuff out of my house. Don't think you're coming back to get it tonight because once that door is closed, once the people leave, that's it. So as you're putting on your shoes and you're getting ready to get out of here, I just, you know, continually I want to say thank you. I do have a Discord up. Um, please, you know, you, you guys can uh, hang out with me in the Discord. I'm still learning it. I do pop in and chat. But if you want to keep the chat going, if you want to share, I have uh, two channels on there so far, I believe. Uh, back office, it's two channels. Um, the AM, so, you know, for the morning crew, if you want to keep the conversation going from the morning, and then I've got the evening um, TNSS, the Natasha Simona Sequence PM uh, evening edition channel on there. Uh, everybody who keeps asking me about these badges, let me tell you something. We're on our way there. We got to get the account to 10,000. So I need you all to share me. That's the only way we get to 10,000. Uh, some people have started leaving already. You can follow suit. You can catch this on the replay. Go. If, you, if your train is coming, because I am originally from New York, what train are you catching? The A train? You better hurry up. It's about to go local. Nobody, everybody hates getting on that C local. You got a, you got a flight to catch? Bye. I hope it's JFK. Straight flight. <laughs> um, what else is there? back office did i hit all the communications right hit the link in the bio um for everybody curious about the two books um i'm adding a book i will have a link for you to easily access the books but for right now you can go to vanbrown.com or you can go to amazon the name of the book is excuse me how did i just black out like that the name of the book is love symptoms diagnosing and curing the common illness i wanted to make sure i got that subtitle on there <laughs> that's why i needed to look but Love, Sim Love Symptoms by Van Brown is the name of the book. Uh, you all were amazing. You did behave. Uh, there is no Tupperware. There's no food to go. We don't do that here. You eat here. You drink here. You leave here with the things you came with <laughs> and come back tomorrow. <laughs> um, Mess Williams says girth is going to the studio. Yes. Um, as you're walking out of here, let me address the question box really quickly. Um, Records and Decor says, yes, can he come on monthly? Listen, I, we could possibly work that out. Um, Tammy Doreen says, Tosh, do you still uh, eat your avocados? I do still eat my avocados. I had it here the other day, but the problem is, is that I'm doing the show by myself now. And so 
uh, me eating and trying to talk to you and make sure y'all are good and not, you know, I'm, I'm very hospitable. So if I'm eating and I'm also trying to entertain you and make sure my people are getting you drinks and everything like that, it's hard for me to eat. So I sacrifice eating my avocado for you. Um, Cotton says, where's my makeup bag? Dear marketing, add that to the list. I've got some fun marketing stuff for you guys, by the way. I can't tell you all of it, but I've got some fun marketing stuff for you. Um, Tara asks, do I eat my avocados plain? Um, no. So I drizzle a little avocado oil on there and I sprinkle it with a little bit of everything but the seasoning. Um, seasoning. Everything but, everything but the everything seasoning from Trader Joe's. I sprinkle, sometimes I sprinkle that on there, but more times than not, I just drizzle it with avocado and I put some cayenne pepper on there. So good. Um, did I hit all the questions in the question box? Uh, somebody asked me, do my sons go to charter school? Um, yes. No. Yes, they do. Wh why did I have to think about that? Because we used to go to private school. The bagel. Okay. Uh, everything but the bagel. That's what it is. I do put pink Himalayan salt. I did forget that. When I put the cayenne pepper, it's with pink Himalayan salt. So sometimes I put everything but the bagel seasoning with cayenne pepper. But if I don't do everything but the bagel seasoning, I put um, pink Himalayan salt and cayenne pepper. That's my favorite way to eat it, by the way. When I eat it with the other seasoning, it's me just getting festive. Everybody have your shoes on? Mess Williams says, hello, skincare products. You want skincare products? Ooh. I'm going to have to partner with a big company for that. We can put that on the future goals list, but I like it. Yep. Call your Uber. You better wait outside. It's a safe neighborhood. <laughs> Time for me to take my clothes off and be a mother. Anyway, everybody, that is the show. I, I just want to say thank you. We have a lot of fun here. Um, we, we do have a lot of fun here. Um, Please, you know, I know it's early in the morning. If you come back to see me in the morning, I'll see you in a few short hours. Uh, but listen, I will for sure hope to see you tomorrow evening. The evening edition is 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow we have an amazing chef on. We have an amazing chef on. And the backstory on that will be sure to make you laugh and um Everybody, I had fun with you all. Thank you for showing up and supporting me. That's the show. Get up on out of here because the minute I press end, I'm taking a sweep and pushing you out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. Uh, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.